Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the React series. In this video, we will learn about the two fundamental concepts of React, State and Props. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to us already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. First, we will understand how React State works and then we will dive into props. So without further ado, let's begin. Typically, a state is an object that stores the values of properties belonging to a component. Now, these values can change over a period of time either via user interactions or network changes. And the state helps facilitate this functionality. Every time the state changes, React re-renders the component to the browser. The state is initialized in the constructor. A state can also store multiple properties. A method called setState is used to update the value of the state object. Now this function performs a shallow merge on the new and the previous state. Conventionally, a shallow merge ensures that the previous state values are overwritten by the new state values. Moving on, in our previous video, we learned about props. And although props and state dictate and control the behavior of a component, they have significant differences. So let's go ahead and draw a comparison between the two. Firstly, props in a component are used to pass data and event handlers to its children, while state on the other hand is used to store the data that has to be rendered on the web page. Props are immutable. Once set by the parent, they cannot be changed. State holds volatile data and can be changed over time. Props can be used in functional and class components, while state is restricted to class components. Props are set by the parent component, while a state is generally updated by event handlers. Now that we've learned all about state, let's go ahead and build an application to see the working of state. Alright, so in my code editor, that is VS Code, I've created my application, say, state. And here, in my source folder, I have my app.js file. Now here, I'm going to get rid of all the unnecessary code that I'm not going to be using. Also, I suggest you go through the React installation on Windows video to help you get started with creating your first application. So let's create our class component, say class app extends react.component. Inside, I have a render method that returns an HTML tag. Let's display a message, welcome. Let's follow the JSX conventions and enclose all the HTML tags within the div tag. So I say div class name equals app. We also have to import the app.css file, import app.css. So we save it and if you look at the browser, we have welcome. Now let's beautify our code. To do that, let's add some styling. So here in my app.js class component, I say styles equals and I say font style and I set it to say bold and I say color, say teal. And here in my h1 tag, I say style equals this dot styles. So let me save it. And if you look at the browser now, we have welcome in teal and it's bold. Now let's go ahead and create a class component to understand state. So first I create a folder and I call it components. And inside this folder, I create a class component and I call it new comp dot js. And I use the snippet RCE to create the class component. To give you an insight into what we're doing today, we'll display a message asking the user to subscribe to Simply Learn. Once the user clicks on the subscribe button, we instruct them to click on the bell icon. And finally, we display a thank you message. Now to do all of this, we're going to make use of state. And as mentioned earlier, we initialize the state object in a constructor. So let's use the snippet rconst to create our constructor. Now in the state object, we initialize a property, let's call it message and we display a message saying subscribe to simply learn. Let's save it. And here in our render method, let's say class name equals app and let's create an h3 tag and within the tag, I display the message. So I say this dot state dot message. Let's save it and now let's import it in our app.js component. So I have to get rid of export here and here I say import new comp from components and new comp. And let's define it here and say new. So we save it and look at the browser. It says subscribe to simply learn. All right. Again, to make our code look more presentable, let's add in styles. So I'll just copy the same styles that I've added here and I'll paste them here 
and instead of bold I make it italic and I change the color to say purple and again in my h3 tag I define style and initialize it to this dot styles so let me save it and now if you look at the browser it's in italic and it's in purple okay so moving ahead let's create a button that reads subscribe and once the user clicks on it the button should read subscribed and the message displayed above should instruct the user to click on the bell icon to do that let's first create a button the message that i want the button to read is subscribe however this message gets changed once the user clicks on the button so instead of explicitly mentioning subscribe here i create a prop i say sub and i say subscribe here and back in my render method i say this dot state dot sub so let's save it and if you look at the browser now you have a button which displays a message subscribe now once the user clicks on the button the message displayed should change to click on the bell icon to never miss an update so let's create an event handler for that so here button on click i call another method and let's call the method button change okay so this method should update the state and change the message and sub values to do that we make use of a set state method now a state can be updated in response to event handlers server responses or prop changes now all the updation can be done using the set state method now this is the general syntax used by the method we'll however look at this further in the demo now the set state method conventionally enqueues all the updates made to the component state and instructs react to re-render the component and its children with the updated state now let's go back to our code editor and look at the working of this method now here i define the arrow function button change if you are not familiar with arrow functions i suggest you read up on them and this is the general syntax and here i say this dot set state and inside i change my message to hit the bell icon to never miss an update and my sub value changes to subscribed let's save this and now if you look at the browser when we click on the subscribe button the message changes to hit the bell icon to never miss an update so moving ahead let's use a bell icon so that the user can click on it once he clicks on the image the image changes and a thank you message appears on the screen so for that i have two images i have bell a and bell b so i drag and drop both the images in my components folder all right now let's import these images into our new com.js file here i say import bell a from bell a dot png and again i say import bell b from bell b dot png all right let me save it to display the image on the screen we make use of the image tag now this tag has two attributes one is the source attribute that specifies the url and the other is the alt attribute that specifies an alternate text for the image so here in my component i say i make use of a paragraph tag that will help display the image in the next line and then i use the image tag now since my image changes once it's clicked i have to define a property and pass the event handler click that will update the image so here before specifying the source let's go back to our state and define another property that is image url and let's set it to bell a since that is the image that i want to display first let me save it and here in my image tag i say source equals this dot state dot image url and then we have the all tag and i do not want to display any message so i leave it as it is now let's save it and if you look at the browser we have a bell displayed however now let's change the dimensions of the bell i do not want such a huge bell so back in my vs code i define style with width say 30 pixels and a height with again 30 pixels let me save this and now if you look at the browser we have a smaller icon so once the user clicks on this image the image changes and the message displayed here gets updated to do that we'll have to define an event so let's go back to our vs code and here in my image tag let's say on click i define a method say this dot image change and now we define this method here i say image change 
I make use of an arrow function again and again I use the set state method. I update the image so I say image URL is now set to bell B and the message is updated to thank you happy learning. So let's save this now and if we look at the browser we see the image and once clicked on it the image gets updated and the message changes. So finally, let me refresh the browser once and show the full execution. Let me refresh. Following the instructions, let's click on the subscribe button. And now it says hit the bell icon. And once I do that, the image updates and the message changes. Props, short for properties, allow the user to pass arguments or data to components. A parent component can pass additional information to its children using props. Properties help make components more dynamic. Props are passed to components in the way similar to that of HTML track attributes. Now we'll look at this a little later in the video. Props in a component are read only and cannot be changed. One thing to remember is that props are sent by the parent to the children components. Hence the children components cannot make any changes to these props. Now that we've learned about props in brief, let's go ahead and create our application using props. If you're new to this tutorial, I suggest you go to the React installation and React components video on our channel. So back in my code editor, that is VS Code, I've opened a folder called React Props. And now I'm going to create a component, a class component, and I'll call it class props. Dot js. So let's create the class component. I give RCE the snippet. And here I display a message saying an h1 tag basically. All right. Now let me get rid of export here and import it in my app.js main component. Here I say import class props. All right. Now we define the class component in a render method. Let's say, all right. Now, if we go back to the browser, you see, hello learners, welcome to Simply Learn. Now, let's say we want to individually welcome every student. Instead of retyping the message for everybody, we can pass their names as props. Now, let's see how to do that. Now, we pass the name as a property from the main component that is app.js to the child component and render this onto the browser. So, let's do that. So, here, while I'm defining my child component, I say name. I save it and here in my child component instead of learners I say I use the keyword this dot props dot name let me save it and if you look at the browser we'll have hello learner one welcome to simply learn now let's go ahead and welcome learner two and learner three so I again say class props name equals learner two All right, so if we save and look at the browser, we'll have all the three learners displayed on the browser. We can also pass multiple props to the child component. Now say for example, we want to welcome the student from a particular place. So we say welcome learner one from place X. So I can here define another property, say place and say place. Similarly, I can do it for the rest too. Place y. Now let's go back to our class props.js component and here say hello learner one from this dot props dot place. Let me save it. And if you look at the browser now, we have hello learner one from place x, place y, and place z. We can also display whatever we want between the opening and closing tags when invoking a component. Now this is facilitated using props.children reserved keyword. Now let me explain to you how it's done with an example. Here, let's split the self and closing tag into an opening and a closing tag. And in between them, let me display a message within the paragraph tag. Let me say, and in my child component, after my h1 tag, let me use a paragraph tag and here let's use the reserved keyword this.props.children. So let's save it 
And now if you look at the browser, you can here see the message displayed child component. So prop stop children can be used when components do not know about their children ahead of time. This is commonly seen in components like sidebar and dialog that represent generic boxes. So let's go ahead and create a button tag and check again. So here I'll split it and add a button tag and say click. And let's check our browser. Here we go. We get the output as expected. All right, we saw the usage of props for class components. Similarly, we can use it for functional components. So let's go ahead and create a functional component. Let me call it, I say import react from react. And then I say function, function props. And here I return an h3 tag. I'll say this is functional component and I'll return another h3 tag saying hello learner. So let me save this and let's export it. Export default function props and import it in our app.js again. Import function prop from function prop and here in our render method let's define it let me call function prop name let me give learner 4 and place place say a let me close it and back in our functional component instead of learner I say props dot name let me save it now if you look at our browser it gives us an error it says props is not defined so let's go back to our code editor and pass props here to our functional component also let me define hello props dot name from props dot place let me enclose it within the div tag here let me save it. And now if you look at our browser, here we go. We get the output as expected. With this, we've reached the end of the video. In our upcoming video, you'll learn more about props and how they're used. So watch out for that. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.